Alright guys, the Edge Blades here on about the Boker Plus Automat Klitschnikov 74. This is the uh, Boker AK. It's pretty common knife. There's a lot of reviews on YouTube, but uh, they have so many different models. I just wanted to let you know which one I was using. Um, if you want to pause and go over the specs real quick, here they all are. But uh, I'll go over them as we go through the video. So I'll move this out of the way. And one thing I really like is that the... Uh, all the Boker AKs come in this awesome little box that looks like an AK mag. That's the uh, specific number of mine. This is a special edition. Um, you can see it right here. It's the uh, silver aluminum stone washed handle with the uh, black dagger blade. See that right there. And the reverse side just says AUS8, made in Taiwan, Taiwan, whatever you want to call it. So we'll move the box out of the way and get talking to it. This is one of my uh, favorite EDC automatic knives. Um, I don't have that that much experience with uh, you know the higher end, like Microtech, stuff like that. So uh, I, I won't really be able to compare with that. But as far as quality goes, this is definitely up to my standards for a $40 knife, which I got from Blade HQ. I believe this specific model, they are out of stock currently. But um, there's, there's many more that you can get that uh, they're all basically the same knife, just different, you know, handle, um, handle colors, blade designs, stuff like that, you know, serrated plain stuff like that so overall we have a length of 7.6 inches our closed length is a uh, four and a quarter inches and the blades 3.35 inches it weighs 3.6 ounces so it's um it's not that heavy I, I say it's a great weight for EDC and like I said the handle on this one's the uh, the stone washed aluminum I'll show you that up close real quick I just love the way it looks. I wanted a, a little bit different. Then just the all blacked out knives, so I think it uh, I think it looks pretty nice. And again, the steel is that uh, it's a black coated AUS8. You can see the serial number, automatic Lishnikov, Boker Plus, and then. Oster AUS8 made in Taiwan. So, um, see, we have the uh, Torx construction here. We got a pocket clip. Uh, it is tip up, right hand carry only. It's not reversible. You can see how it's put in there with um, a little cutout in the. Uh, the scale is a flow through design here. So, uh, there's just two pieces of aluminum together. We got some, we got one, two, three different spacers, and then the pivot, which I love the pivot on these Boker automatic Klishnikov knives. We can let's see if we can zoom in, show you what that looks like. Mm, see if it'll focus. Uh, focus. It's got that star, and it says uh, Klishnikov. In American and what I would assume is Kalishnikov in Russian since the, uh, the Kalishnikov's a, a Russian made weapon and the reason it's uh, it's named after the Kalishnikov is not because it's an automatic knife but because if you look at the original bayonet design for the uh, AK-47 and the AK-74 it, uh, it was very reminiscent of this. It had the four deep finger grooves, these uh, little block type things, and it uh, hooked upside down on the AK to, uh, you know, facilitate stabbing attacks and slashing attacks, stuff like that. So the uh, the action, of course, as you can see, it's a push button, automatic. It's got a coil spring in here, so it's not OTF or out the front. It opens, you know as a normal folder would except much easier just a push of a button 
and the the lock is the or the uh, actuation button is the the locking mechanism as well. It's a button lock or a uh, piston type lock. So overall, it's got a nice lanyard hole. Hole, sorry, right here. Um, I like I like that. I don't carry. Uh, most of my knives with lanyards I have a couple with lanyards on it, but you know, I'm not a huge fan. But I like where it's located. It's not going to come in contact with the blade at any point. And what I really like about this knife is the comfort. It's just incredibly comfortable. It fits great in my hand. Just super, it just locks into place super hard here. We got this awesome jimping on the aluminum. Uh, handles here and as well as the blade it kind of lines up you can see right there and as well on the back so it's either pushing against the uh, the meat of your your hand here or if you're in the reverse grip it gives you something nice for your thumb to hold on to and uh, as far as like a defensive blade goes I think this is a great design because of the fact that it just it, it locks into place. Nothing could uh, take this away from me if I was holding on to it. So that's a big plus in my book. It's just extremely comfortable. One thing I wish maybe they rounded off these inside um, corners just a little bit, but it's not it's not uncomfortable. It just could be more comfortable if that were you know rounded off a little bit. Like I said, it's a forty dollar knife. Um, the one thing I, I'm not a huge fan of, the blade centering, I kind of corrected it. You can see it's a little bit off to the, uh, the pocket clip side, which in this case is the left side. Um, I can just push it over and tighten the pivot a little bit. I loctited it because the pivot, it does get used because it, uh, loose because it is an automatic knife. It's got more pressure than it, it usually would. But, uh, the, um... The blade centering was my only issue. It's only scraped on the handle a few times. Once I uh, tightened that up, it, it got much better. But it's still, you can see it's still not quite perfect. Uh, there's zero up and down play, but there is a bit of side to side. You can see that there. And uh, that's, that's to be expected because of it being an automatic knife. So because you have to have that um, coil spring wound up in here and that force pushing it open you don't want it to be too tight otherwise it won't push open as fast as it uh, originally would want to. The button you will not push you see kind of sticks out but if you just push it in it's not reset in there or recessed in there and you will not push it open in your pocket. The only downside is if you push it kind of in in your pocket I don't know maybe you have something else in there or you set it or something you can see how the tip of the blade just kind of sticks up right there. Now this is pushed to the back of my pocket so I would never hit it reaching in there because the, the blade would be against my inner pocket. But that's just something to think of. So just push it with the, uh, the tip of your thumb and it opens right up. Overall one of my favorite current EDC blades. I'll definitely have some more videos on my other EDC blades in the future. Got a couple more to review, stuff like that. Some more gear, um, possibly some guns. I'm going to get into that a little bit. But for now, uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, hope you enjoy this video. And if so, please uh, check back because I'll have plenty more coming up in the next week or so here. Thank you.